What up YouTube? On this video I'm going to show you how to install the Raspbian operating system on a Raspberry Pi and I'm going to install it on my Raspberry Pi 3 that I'm going to use as a D-Star hotspot but I'm going to show you how to do that without a monitor or a keyboard so that way you don't have to unplug the keyboard from your own computer or try to drag a monitor out you can do it fairly easily uh, just with the Raspberry Pi hooked into your network. So, let's start. Okay, we're going to start by taking our micro SD card and inserting it into our computer. Okay, after you have that micro SD card hooked up to your computer, we need to go and mount the Raspbian sketch on that SD card. So, we're going to go to this website here. You can pause the video, but it's raspberrypi.org slash downloads slash raspbian. And you can either download it with a torrent or download with a zip. You're also going to want to download the program Etcher so we can mount the image to the SD card. You can pause the video right now to get the URL, but it's etcher.io. Okay, once you open Etcher, you're going to select the image. Select the raspbian skip zip file and then you want to make sure you select your micro SD card which in this case is drive F for me which is a 16 gigabyte micro SD card and you want to hit flash and you pretty much just now I'm getting a, a security warning so we want to allow that but you pretty much just let Etcher do its thing Okay, when you're all done, it'll say flash complete. So we can go and check it out. So actually to check it out, you're going to have to pull out your micro SD card and plug it back in for it to reboot. And then it'll be formatted into boot. So we open and view files. So we got all of our files there. Now in order to access this for a command line interface over the network, we had to add a SSH file with no extension. So we want to go and uh, open up the command line. Once you're in the command prompt, you want to navigate to the drive, the micro SD drive. So you put CD in for change directory. And then you type in the micro SD drive, which in my case it is drive F. Okay, now when we're in drive F, we want to type in echo, space, and two arrows, then SSH. So pause the screen right now to see what you type in. And then you hit enter. And that's it. We want to check the micro SD boot drive to see that we have SSH with no file extension. What that will do is that will enable SSH on boot up so we can access the command terminal of the Raspbian Pi. So now what we want to do is we want to install another program called PuTTY. And you can get PuTTY from this URL right here. You can pause the screen right now to copy it. So you want to download the installer. Okay, now you want to take your micro SD card and insert it into the Raspberry Pi. And make sure it's fully inserted. And now you want to hook up your network cable directly to your network. In this case, it's my router. And then once you hook it up to your network, you can go ahead and power up the Raspberry Pi. And let it boot up. Okay, so now at this time we have the Raspberry Pi powered up and connected in with the network and booted up. And we have PuTTY downloaded, installed, and launched. So now we just need the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. Um, my network automatically assigns the IP addresses, which 
most likely is the case for you. So in order to find the IP address of the Raspberry Pi, we want to go into the command prompt again. And we want to type in ping. And then we want to type in Raspberry Pi. All one word with no space. And it'll try to find it. And it successfully found it. It sent four packets, received four packets. And the IP address, in my case, is 192.168.1.187. And we want to remember that IP address. So you take that IP address and you type it into PuTTY. 192.168.1.187. And you hit open. Okay, we have successfully connected to the command terminal of the Raspberry Pi. So the default username is Pi, P-I. Enter, and the default password is raspberry, all lowercase. Now to warn you, as you're typing into the Raspberry Pi, the password, it's not going to advance the cursor or anything, but it is taking your types. So you just type raspberry, all lowercase, and press enter. And we are successfully in the command terminal of our Raspberry Pi. So first thing we want to do is we want to get some updates. So we're going to type in sudo apt-get space update. And pause the video right now if you want to copy that. Once you copy that down, just press enter. And go ahead and just wait and let it do its thing. Okay, so once that's finished, we want to type in the same thing again, except we want to type in upgrade. So we type in sudo space apt dash get space upgrade. And pause the video now if you want to take a look at what I typed in. And you press enter. And you just let it do, let it do its thing. Now it's going to ask you if you want to add uh, the new files. So you want to type in Y for yes and enter. Okay, when that's done, we're ready to install a uh, tight VNC server, which is what we're going to use to remote connect to the desktop. So you want to type in sudo space apt dash get space install space tight VNC server. All one word. So pause the video right now to see what I typed in. And you press enter, and it will install type VNC server. And it'll ask you if you would like to install it. So you want to hit Y and enter. Okay, once it's installed, we want to check to make sure that it will make a connection. So you type in VNC server space colon one. So pause the video if you want to see what I typed in. You press enter. And since this is the first time we're setting this up, it's going to ask us for a password. So you type in a password and you want to verify. And same thing, as you're typing it in, it'll act like it's not taking, but that's just something that uh, the Linux does. And then the view only password, we really don't need that. Okay, it should be set up. So we can type it again and it'll let us know if it's set up. And you see it says it's already running. Now the only problem is anytime you reboot the Raspberry Pi or power down, power it up, it won't run automatically. You would have to type in VNC server space colon one in order to set up the connection. Now if you wanted to automatically run VNC server every time it boots up so you don't have to access the command terminal, you want to type in sudo space nano space forward slash etc space rc dot local. And pause the video here if you want to screenshot what I typed in. And then you press enter. And you get to this screen, you want to arrow down to right above exit. Between fi and exit, we want to put a command here to go and 
start a VNC connection when the Raspberry Pi boots up. And that VNC connection and that command is going to be su space dash space pi space dash c space single quotation forward slash usr forward slash bin forward slash vnc server space colon one single quotation and screenshot it to if you want to see what I typed in then you want to press control X to exit and it asks if we want to save and we want to press Y and save and then you want to press enter now let's go ahead and reboot the Raspberry Pi to make sure that it automatically sets up the VNC server. So you want to type in sudo space reboot. And you're going to have to go and reconnect it through the putty because it doesn't automatically reconnect. Okay, we gave it a little second to reboot, so we want to automatically reconnect through PuTTY. Pi and Raspberry again. And then we want to type in VNC server space colon one. And it says a VNC server is already running. So that means that we successfully modified it so every time it reboots or powers up it'll automatically start a VNC server clinic. So now we want to access the desktop through VNC server and you do that by going to realvnc.com and you want to download just VNC viewer because you don't want to set up a server on your Windows computer. So you download VNC viewer and then you want to run VNC viewer now you want to type in the IP address again, which in my case is 192.168.1.187, and then you want to type in colon and one, and press enter. And normally it will ask you for a password, and that password is the password you type in when you installed, when you set up VNC server space colon one for the first time. But since I already had VNC viewer saved for this connection, it didn't ask me for the password. And that's it. We have successfully downloaded and installed the Raspbian OS with desktop to the Raspberry Pi and created a remote connection to it to control it. Um, this warning is just letting you know that the default username and password is still on my Pi, so anyone on my local area connection could access the command terminal. And then uh, this is just informing you that it's been upgraded, which uh, we didn't have anything installed on it previously, so we don't have to worry about that. But yeah, now uh, we can uh, browse the web or do whatever we wanted to do on the Raspberry Pi. But we were able to get it all set up without uh, taking out a monitor or keyboard. And I thought I would just make a video, uh, all in one video, showing you the steps to do that. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please leave a comment below, and uh, I'll see you later.